Hi everyone. Today I'd like to take you with me on a tour of ancient Egypt and the Houston Museum of Natural Sciences exhibit, Ramses the Great and the Gold of the Pharaohs. I've always been fascinated by the history, art, and culture of Egypt, and I was really excited when I heard this exhibit was coming to Houston. This model of two temples was one of the most interesting pieces at the exhibit. Every morning, dawn light shines on the front of the great temple. The smaller temple beside it has statues of Ramses' beloved queen, Nefertari, which are the same size as Ramses' statues. This is really unusual and shows how important she was to him. The pharaoh was usually portrayed as much larger than the other people around him, showing how important he was, and not his actual physical size. The interior of the Great Temple was angled so that twice a year, on February 22nd and October 22nd, the light of the rising sun would penetrate all the way to the innermost sanctuary, illuminating the gods. Kings often rewarded military commanders with gold, and these dishes were gifted to a general by King Susanes I. One shows young girls swimming among fish and lotus blossoms. These tiles were recovered from one of Ramses' palaces. Some of the tiles show captured prisoners of war. They were laid on the floor, allowing the pharaoh to literally walk across his enemies as he crossed his halls. Nowadays, artists use sketch pads. Artists in ancient Egypt would occasionally sketch out ideas on fragments of stone left behind at building projects. This gold was found in one later pharaoh's tomb. He had apparently repurposed the gold from tombs of richer, more powerful pharaohs who had come before him. Some of this might be gold from the lost treasure that was buried with Ramses the Great. It's hard to imagine just how lavish the burials of the great pharaohs were, but we see hints of it in the treasures that we found in other tombs. I decided to sketch this gilded wooden funeral mask. This was made from wood, overlaid with gold and bronze. It dates from the third intermediate period in Egyptian history, which fell between about 1070 and 660 BC. From here on out, the video will be sort of grainy and dim because the area that this funeral mask was in was very, very dark. I think the people who designed the exhibit were trying to create a sense of mystery by keeping the lights low, with only a spotlight here and there on the artifacts, but it did make filming difficult. I managed to find one dim light to shoot under, but the angle was pretty awkward and my hand ended up blocking the camera from time to time, so I apologize about that. On the whole, however, I did really enjoy sitting there and painting in the company of these ancient works of art. I was reminded how much time has passed between my life and the lives of the people who created these pieces, and somehow it seemed that the time between us was very short. Whenever I visit a museum, I'm constantly reminded of the passage of time, and yet I also gain a sense of stillness, or a moment when the years stand still and meet. I wonder how much of what we build today will survive thousands of years from now, especially since we don't build with the intention of creating something to last for an eternity, the way the Egyptians did. At any rate, a visit to an exhibit like this always makes me a little philosophical and gives me a new sense of appreciation for history and culture. I hope this inspires you to pay a visit to your local museum and find a piece of art to connect with. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.